Hi everybody, uh, good afternoon. It's Mike. I'm Mike Garska with SuccessToolChest.com and FindAMentor.com. Welcome to this week's Help Me Communicate, where I help you become a better communicator. This week, we're going to talk about self-talk. Uh, self-talk is crucial uh, when you're in that difficult situation. Uh, self-talk governs your emotions. It governs uh, what words you're going to choose to say. And, um, and it affects how you respond, which affects how other people respond to you. Um, so self-talk, your, your ability to talk to yourself and govern your thoughts affects your emotional state. And it, like I say, it affects how other people respond. So what should self-talk look like? Um, how, how, what should it look like to govern that emotional state and uh, the words that you choose in your interactions so that you get what you want out of an interaction? Um, Self-talk is especially crucial when the, uh, the stakes are high and emotions are charged. And, and so we're going to give you some tips for, and some guidelines. We're going to give you three guidelines for how to uh, talk to yourself when that's the situation, when the stakes are high, when situations are difficult or crucial. What would it be like if you could control your emotion? What would it be like if you could calm yourself in any situation or uh, respond to difficult situations with ease, with a, with a confident approach? Would it, would it make your life a lot easier? Would it make your life more peaceful? Of course it would. Um, and, and when you approach those difficult situations with a calm, collected, cool, confident approach, other people respond differently than if you respond to those difficult situations with uh, emotionally charged negative energy. And self-talk governs that emotionally charged negative energy. Self-talk can govern your body language and your body language and your voice tone dramatically uh, um, affect how other people are going to respond and react to you. So there's, I'm gonna give you three guidelines for uh, controlling that self-talk to help you get through those difficult situations and those crucial conversations where the, the stakes are high and emotions run deep. The first step is to pause, stop, Get self-aware. Self-awareness is key to all types of success in life, but particularly to successful, effective communications techniques. Um, self-awareness is key. And what do you want to be self-aware of? Well, you want to ask yourself, there's five simple questions that you can ask yourself to take yourself to that next level of awareness that helps you control what you're going to uh, say, that helps you uh, that you can use that self-talk for to uh, to govern the situation more effectively. Here's the five questions. We want you to be aware of your ship, your human interaction process. What did I just witness? What did I see in here? So you're stopping, you're pausing, and you're asking, what did I witness? What did I see? What words did I hear? Where are my thoughts about that? How do I feel? And what is my intention? What do I want after listening to this uh, situation that happened or hearing the situation or seeing the situation. So that's your first step. Stop, pause, get self-aware, ask those five questions. What did I see in here? What are my thoughts? How do I feel? What's my intention? And how am I going to choose to act is the fifth question. Um, but, but you start that uh, making that decision by getting aware of those four things. So that's the first step. The second step is, uh, now I'm assuming that emotions are charged, that we're triggered. Um, and so the next step is to, again, take a break. Not only do you stop, but you take a break from the situation. When emotions are charged, we uh, do and say things that we wouldn't normally do. When emotions are charged and we respond in charged emotion, we take the person we're connecting with to charged emotion as well. And then we just climb that ladder of charging our emotion and the chances of effective resolution are very, very slim when both people are emotionally charged very high. So stop and take a break is the second step when your emotions are charged. Now, uh, when emotions are charged, this is where self-talk comes in. Uh, taking the break is the first step. Then we, uh, talk, uh, we talk to ourselves uh, um, about calming ourselves. Now often, um, 
I'll say to the person, if I'm in a charge situation or I'm not happy with what's going on, is I'll say, look, I'm angry and I'm frustrated right now and I need to take a break so I can approach this situation with a calm, cool and collected approach. And when people hear that, they immediately uh, take a step back and most of the time they allow that to happen. And just take a minute and start your self-talk. Okay, Michael, what's going on for you? Uh, what uh, what's, what's really happening here for you? You're angry, uh, you're, you're uh, upset. And, and so um, let's think about what you did in the past to get past that anger and that frustration. Um, what, what worked for me in the past? Uh, I'll start to think, okay, so what's going on for the other person? I'm kind of angry that this other person said these things that put me in this situation or that triggered these emotions in me. So what might be going on for the other person? This is this kind of self-talk that I go through. Um, um, uh, I'll ask, uh, you know, okay, so uh, what what control does this person actually have? If I'm in, a, in a, an environment, in a work in, or a, a retail environment where somebody is serving me and I don't like the way they're serving me and it makes me angry, um, I'll, my self-talk will be, okay, so uh, what power does this person truly have? Is this person following policy and procedure? Are they being uh, following what their boss told them to do? Do they have any, actually any control other than to respond in the way that they respond? What's going on for them? I don't know what's going on for them. Um, so my self-talk becomes, okay, uh, okay, what's going on for them? Um, how do I find out what's going on for them? By asking what's going on for them. This is the self-talk that I go through. First I go through, okay, so uh, last time that I was angry like this, I uh, took my break and I just talked myself out of it. And uh, the other thing that I did is I considered what's going on for the other person. And, uh, and so I take my self-talk to that. So for example, um, Earlier last week, um, I've got a situation right now where my sister was diagnosed with cancer and I've been uh, her advocate to get through to make sure that everybody's aware of what's going on, we understand the full situation and um, I've been helping her with her uh, chemotherapy appointments and uh, organizing some uh, home care and other care for her and that kind of stuff and I've been very busy with appointments and I've scheduled work outside, uh, scheduled work, rescheduled work to take her to her appointments and that kind of stuff and my brother had a, a tough situation last week as well that I had to deal with and, and help him through and so um, I had scheduled out a morning from work and was looking after uh, my sister and my brother's two situations um, that morning that I scheduled out from work uh, first thing that my sister's appointments got scheduled rescheduled and I got frustrated shoot now I got to reorganize all this stuff and then uh, two hours later my brother's appointments got rescheduled now all of a sudden I not only took away my morning from work but I have to reschedule my afternoon because these appointments got changed and I was very frustrated so I thought to myself okay first of all Michael um, you can't do anything about it. Uh, these other people have rescheduled these appointments. I can't make that change. There, there's no, nothing that I can do to make everything happen the way I thought it was going to this morning. So first thing I did was get aware that I'm frustrated. Uh, I got aware that I had no control and that's what my self-talk was. I don't have control. Um, my self-talk, okay, so these people that rescheduled, they're following their policies and their procedures and they're working within the uh, guidelines and the frames that they have ability to work with. And so I just accepted that and I accepted my frustration and I sat in it and I said, well, I'm going to sit with this until it grounds out and moves on. And eventually it did. And I accepted the other appointments, I made the adjustments, I rescheduled my work stuff for the next day and found a way to get all caught up and things went smoothly. But I stopped and before I responded in a negative way, I collected my thoughts. I got control of my emotion through controlling my thoughts, through my self-talk. And then I responded, I rescheduled what I needed to reschedule and I maintained some peace of mind. The goal here uh, in Help Me Communicate is to help you become a better communicator so that you can maintain peace of mind and move up that success ladder. And, and your self-talk is a big, big part of that. So I wanna ask you, what words do you use to calm yourself down? Think of a time where you were emotionally charged. What did you say to yourself to get yourself calmed down eventually? Um, 
write all those things down. Um, what is your process? What is the process that works to calm you down? Everybody's different. Some people need to, uh, if you're a smoker, some people go for a smoke. If you're a walker, some people go for a short walk. Some people have a drink of coffee or um, they'll phone a friend that they can rely on. I only have control over myself. I can calm myself down. I know I can. I've done it before. I start by asking questions. What do I want? What's the best situation for me and for the other person? I think win-win. These are the kind of things that I go through in my self-talk. When I felt this in the past, what's helped me get through? Um, um, what helps me calm down? What's the best way for me to approach to get approach the situation to get what I want? Those are this this way I talk, that's the way I talk to myself. I say the other person has thoughts emotions and intentions here. Uh, they're probably following a process or a procedure that was set by their boss or, or whoever's governing them. Uh, and I acknowledge that and I get inquisitive. Um, um, and, I, and I remember that, um, the, the, uh, that what matters to the other person doesn't necessarily matter to me. What matters to me doesn't matter to the other person. Everybody's in their own agenda. Everybody has is taking care of themselves and they don't care what's going on for me necessarily. They care what's going on for, the, for themselves. They care about their peace of mind. They care about following their policies, their procedures and their processes. And if I don't acknowledge that, the frustration is only gonna build. So this is my self-talk. I, I talk, okay, so I need to find out what's going on for the other person. That is uh, the third step in this self-talk process. Get uh, curious, invoke curiosity. Ask yourself, how am I going to ask this other person what's going on? What, what am I gonna ask them? So what are the procedures? Uh, recently I helped another f uh, p person I know that was struggling um, with dealing with a government agency uh, about a subsidy for his rent. And he'd been approved for this and got a letter that he was approved and made numerous phone calls and got nowhere as to when these funds were actually going to come through. So I said, okay, let me look at this. I read the letter. Uh, there was some contact information on there and I phoned the person and I, uh, I simply asked them, okay, so here's this person. I'm here as an advocate. I let them know exactly what's going on. I said, uh, we've been approved for this subsidy. What do we have to do to take it to the next level? How do we actually do this? What is the holdup? What is the situation here? Uh, you know, what can, what can you do to help me? And then the woman on the other end of the phone asked me a few questions. We answered those questions. And I said, okay, so wh where's the process? She said, okay, so here's the situation. Here's your point score. Here's where you stand. Here's how long it's gonna take. I said, the next thing I said is, okay, so is there anything you can do to speed up the process? No. Okay. Is there anything that we can do? Is there anybody else we can contact? Is there any other organizations that we could contact to help speed up this process? He said, actually, yes, there's, there's one thing that you can do that might speed up the process. So what I did was I got in touch with um, what the capabilities of the other person actually were, what the guidelines that they could follow uh, within their parameter of, or their scope of work uh, would, that, that uh, that they could follow and where they could help us. So by asking questions about them rather than telling them about me, we got what we need, got the information we needed to do. We got some help on how to speed the process up. But what my focus was, was what their agenda was, what their guidelines were, what their policies and procedures were, and what uh, that person had to follow. And I focused on them. So the self-talk again becomes get curious. So back to your three steps. Number one is to pause, stop, get self-aware. Number two is when you're emotionally charged, take a break, get calmed down before you go to the next level. What self-talk have you used in the past to calm yourself down while you're taking that break? And do that and write it out. Number three is to invoke curiosity. Find out what's going on for the other person and then your action be first to find out what's the other person. The only time in any crucial situation that I give my agenda before finding out what the other person's agenda is, is when I'm so emotionally charged that I need to take a break. And so what I speak in that situation is, I'm angry right now, I'm frustrated, I need a break before I take this conversation to the next level. So please give me a few minutes to calm myself down and then I'll come back and, and, and people appreciate that. People don't want to deal with somebody who's emotionally charged or angry or frustrated. They want to deal with somebody that's calm, cool, and collective. 
Um, I, I question my self-talk. I, I question what my body language is going to be, what my voice tone is that I'm going to choose, what my facial expression is. All of this starts with self-talk. So number one, stop, pause, get self-aware. Two, remove yourself from the situation if you're emotionally charged. And three, invoke your curiosity, get curious, and find out what's going on for the other person before you start sharing all of your agenda. And remember, most of your agenda doesn't really matter to the other person. The only thing about your agenda that matters to the other person is what how they can affect that agenda. What is within their guidelines to actually do something about this? And sometimes it's with beyond their power to do anything more than what they're doing right now. So to push them to do that is just going to create conflict and angst and make you go nowhere. Get curious about the other person, find out what they can do, and then adjust yourself accordingly. If you need to take it to the next level, talk to their supervisor or uh, to another person who makes that decision for them. If you're talking with a husband or a wife or family situation, often there's other people that, that control what, what uh, decisions are going to be made. Find everything out before you go there. Remember your self-talk. What do you do to calm yourself down? Write it down and practice, practice, practice. Uh, this first step of becoming self-aware. Practice, practice, practice. Practice uh, becoming self-aware even in when things are good. Always ask yourself, what am I thinking? What did I see? What did I witness? What did I hear? What am I thinking about that? How am I feeling about that? What's my intention? Those four questions. Get in the habit of asking that often. When you build that habit in all your communications, interactions of getting self-aware before you do anything, and the second step of that is asking before you share your agenda. If you do those two things habitually, when you get into that charged emotional state, that will be your habit. That will be your automatic reaction. So practice, practice, practice becoming self-aware and inquiring before you share your agenda. If you do those two things first, habitually, that's going to be your automatic reaction. When... Uh, the situation is charged when the stakes are high, when your emotions run deep. And if that's your automatic reaction, your chances of getting resolution automatically are much, much higher. Step away when you're emotionally charged. Don't forget to do that. I hope you enjoyed today's Help Me Communicate. Watch yourself talk. Become aware of your self-talk. Your positive thinking controls your emotion to make it positive. And if you're in the negative emotion, all the positive thinking in the world isn't going to make things better. You have to use your self-discipline to control your self-talk, to get your emotions stable, controlled, and, and start to invoke those positive emotions like confidence, sure-footedness, uh, enthusiasm, perseverance, persistence, patience. Those are all positive emotions that you want to invoke using your self-talk, your positive self-talk. Get aware of what your negative, automatic negative responses are for self-talk. Be aware of that. Oh, I can't do this. Or um, I, uh, I don't need this in my life. I'm not going to put up with it. As soon as you allow yourself to go to those negative self-talks, your chances of getting resolution or going to that next level is very slim. So again, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, Help Me Communicate. Uh, go out and make it an awesome day. Watch yourself talk. Practice, practice, practice. Get in the habit of being self-aware and inquiring first. Uh, please like our Facebook posts. Like our pages on Facebook. Check out successtoolchest.com. Uh, the HIP uh, Human Interaction Process free, free Awareness Tool is available as a free download, either in a PDF or a video. Uh, download that for free at successtoolchest.com. Sign up for our Contact Communications Masterminding Program, the, uh, the program, the online program that helps you become a great communicator. And when you sign up for that program, you get full support from me on a regular basis some one-on-one -on -one coaching, some group coaching, and that kind of stuff. Um, ch check out findamentor.com. Be a mentor. Pay it forward in that area of life that you're an expert at. And join as a mentee in that area of life that you want to improve on. There's over 1,900 categories where you can be a mentor or a mentee at findamentor.com. Uh, go out and make it an awesome day. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week for Help Me Communicate. I'm Mike Garska. Bye for now.